Good morning. Good morning, good morning. What a great opportunity it is to be here with all of you and really kick off the energy around uh, this year's Hyperledger Forum. Um, I am excited to be back in person and energized by the member summit yesterday and all of the incredible discussions that were already happening. Um, it's been a long time, Daniela, since our, our moments at, uh, in Phoenix, for sure. So it's fantastic to be here. Um, and we've got a really interesting topic to kick us off around the metaverse and why it matters to blockchain leaders. Um, I had lots of sidebar discussions yesterday about kind of how this trend is emerging. Trends have changed in the last few years since we've gotten together. Um, and this is one of those trends that is talked about everywhere and understood very little. So in a very short amount of time, I'm gonna give you a little bit about how we think about the metaverse and how it will matter to you. And uh, as Daniela said, as our Accenture colleagues, there's many of us around, so there'll be lots more sessions throughout, throughout the week to have discussions and add further questions and commentary. But really, what, what is the metaverse? The metaverse will impact everything we do, from consumers to enterprises, to your, uh, actually, how you manage your business, to the products that you buy as they're becoming more and more digital first products, to how you make your products. Think about digital twins and immersive experiences. Um, we are seeing in payments how you pay for things and how this comes together. The metaverse as a whole is really defining the next evolution of the internet. We've been going through many evolutions and it's a special moment as we, uh, as we look at this moment in time. So as I think about this trend, why, why it matters, there are two key foundational points to it. The internet of place and the internet of ownership. So within the internet of place, many of you, when you think of the metaverse, saw visual immersive experiences, right? This is uh, really how we connect and how we collaborate in immersive experiences from augmented reality to headsets <laughs> to 3D experiences that are bringing together new and immersive ways to think about um, how we experience each other. The technology has been here a long time. It's hitting a moment where it's becoming more exposed uh, across the board and more accessible with 5G and trends that are, that are moving across the board. Um, we've got just the, if you think of the evolution of the internet, We've gone from like static moments of just reading content on the internet, right? I started my career early and I remember in the afternoon I'd like refresh the news site and be like, is there something to read? <laughs> like the news site just to have my afternoon break. Um, and then the internet evolved, right? It became social. Um, this is a great time, hashtag forum, go post something about your experience and what you want to learn this week. But the, the internet became social and we experienced things together. The creator economy has flourished across the board. And those, I think, moments coming together are creating this need for us to want to yearn to collaborate and to be together again. Um, and in that being together again, we've seen just the rise of experiences where we have from multiplayer gaming now to <laughs> environments where we, um, we've actually launched an onboard, onboarding process in which uh, we've handed out headsets and, and brought people through an immersive collaborative space through our hiring process. So people during the pandemic who were just getting a new computer and a laptop in the mail to start now can meet in the metaverse and have social conversations with spatial audio, connect to each other, not just listen to a presentation, but network and get to know each other much like you guys will wander and whisper in the hallways and have conversations in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it is becoming much, much more accessible. So as you think of the internet of place, it is a shared experience. Um, we don't log into a brand's website today and say, who else is shopping, right? But in this idea of becoming in these immersive retail shops, that we can start to create community and harness community, and community that will continue to grow and to yearn together um, and meet that need that we've missed. But really the other trend that's interesting to all of you as blockchain leaders, I've been in the blockchain space since 2015 and uh, it's been an evolution. The internet of ownership is really changing the way in which we think of engaging with data. Um, the way in which we engage with uh, kind of things across the board. Um, as we you know, think back to the beginning of 
you know, the 2008 white paper <laughs> where the decentralization of everything to solve a double spend problem created a moment, right? A moment in which you, um, people started to engage as we all have in different open source communities um, around engaging in how can I participate in this movement? It created a whole new product category, which is why many of you are here, here in the room. But that has continued to evolve. The next decade, right, has um, driven this idea of the tokenization of everything. And if you can take the tokenization of everything and bring it together with, with this movement, we're seeing that together to bring the Internet of Place and the Internet of Ownership together uh, to create the metaverse. And so I'm going to give you a couple of examples um, around this that kind of bring this convergence together. And, and we call it a continuum. The metaverse is a continuum because there is not, like, you're not going to get to this end point and be like, ta-da, the metaverse is here. <laughs> it's an evolution of adding together features and functions that are creating and unlocking and completely unprecedented, unprecedented new experiences. So imagine the track and trace farm to fork use case that we've all heard about in provenance and blockchain. Um, and take that farm, create a digital representation of the farm, go virtually visit the farm, and realize that the first mile problem is just as hard as the last mile problem in any supply chain. Right? I sit in supply chain discussions all the time, and we're going to build these networks, and nobody really understands the infrastructure. Right? And the first mile from the farm in some part of the world um, has a different technology footprint than the rest of the world. You move from there, and then you go to a uh, distribution center. Today, if you visit a distribution center, you walk down the aisles, you know exactly how much shelf space a competitor has. But in blockchain networks, we've now privatized all that, right? So I can see the pieces. I see what you see, but I only see what I want you to see, right? We've, we've got these concepts. Imagine a virtual tour of a distribution center that's driven by data and real-time information overlaying in this experience. So you only show them what you want to show them. And then you imagine kind of fast-forwarding through to there's a supply chain disruption. We've got... Um, the ability now to come together in a command center and collaborate over the data and information that all of you have been putting together in these shared networks across an end tier supply chain. And so you create this entirely new way of like, how can we take what all of you are already doing and bring it together in the room to collaborate around it, right? And so that's what we think the next generation of internet, it's, it's interesting, it's commerce, it's pieces of experiences. But it's also then bringing together that ownership and information and data sharing layer that brings an entirely new piece together. We see the same trend in immersive learning, right? So we, uh, we can learn. 90% of executives believe that their learning platforms need to be improved. Um, and they're ready for kind of a regeneration of that. So how can we immersively teach? But then why aren't we offering credentials that are verifiable <laughs> across these communities, right? The, the cross-connect of the use cases we're seeing in the metaverse to what all of you are doing is everywhere. Um, if you think of uh, the shopping experience in the metaverse, at, if you're going to buy something, you need a payment rail. <laughs> you need to know who your shoppers are and be able to offer digital tokens and carry them forward, the whole you know, explosion of different wallet solutions. Well, imagine having you know, your wallet Contain your identity, your credentials, your tokens, and you know the the whole kind of breadth and depth of what you can do, and and bring that into a shared persistent space together. So the technology that all of you are doing <laughs> in driving the Hyperledger Foundation is coming together, and is going to make the features and functions of the metaverse so much more meaningful than I saw something in three dimensions or I experienced something in new ways. And so whether you are a skeptic or you are early adopters and working on some metaverse use cases, this, this space needs and people like yourselves who understand, is your environment or your use case highly governed or loosely governed? All the information you guys have about how to work with networks, how to engage a community, and how to grow is absolutely a, an a evolution of what we're seeing from the you know, traditional consortium building discussions you'll hear this week to building a responsible metaverse that is safe and secure and provides you know, inclusivity and diversity at its core as we build this going forward. So you have lots more to hear about it. But I think all of you have made an incredible decision to, do, <laughs> to be here. 
and you're part of a movement, right? Open source has moved so much of this forward. And I'm so excited to, to fast forward in a couple years to see what new projects did this week inspire in the Hyperledger Foundation that create new use cases that merge together all of the features and functions that we're starting to see and expect from our clients in the metaverse. So I just you know, encourage all of you to uh, take a moment and really in, be inspired <laughs> about being part of this movement as you move forward. But the metaverse is a continuum. It is evolving. It's like the race to digital, right? It will continue to evolve and have lots of different things. And all of you will be at the heart of it as it continues to expand in its scope. So I just uh, thank you all for your time today. Enjoy.